Hey, it's Ev from Ev Rivado. I'm here from Common Radio. Shout out to the squad. Walter, James, you dig? We out here in New York City. We get the money. You feel me? James AP, I'm on Comedy Radio, today I'm with Ev. How you doing? I'm chilling bro, how's everything? I'm good, I'm good. What you been up to? Um, just grinding, working on getting this new collection out. Um, hopefully we'll have it out by middle of September, you know. Just playing some pop-ups with Neiman Marcus and um, some other retailers across the globe. You know, just constantly grinding, you know, creating garments, that's what we do. Tell me a little about you as, as a kid and your upbringing. Well, um, I grew up in a tailor shop because my dad's a tailor. So from like the age, like from since I can remember, I was in a tailor shop. So I was always around clothes, always around garments. But you know, I never really took it seriously. I never really wanted to do clothes. But I guess when I got to high school, you know, like sneakers were really big then. Like not as big as they are now, but you know, it was like that culture that was, you know, ripening. So it's like, that's how like a lot of people I know like myself got into fashion was through like, you know, you know, Nike talk and like ISS and all of that. So, you know, that was just like the beginning of it. And then um I always like dressed kinda cool. So mm-hmm. my friends were like, Oh, why don't you start a brand? And then that's how my first brand, Lisa Life Society, started. And then a couple of years later, you know, we're we're here. Yeah. So for you was it directly like straight to fashion through all the forums and talk pages or did you start with shoes first um no it was definitely like screen printing Mm -hmm. on like you know just gildens and like stuff like that and then just getting them selling them through the school like there was a point where i would just like take sweaters to school and like kids would just buy them and then i'll sell them for like 80 dollars and then people were like oh like who do you think you are selling like sweaters for 80 dollars and at the time like I was very, you know, into like BBC and Bape and like, you know, a t-shirt from BBC was like 80 bucks. And I was like, I was just trying to like buy that. So yeah. I was like, I had to like put my prices there. And then I guess that's how it started. And then we like had a group of friends. We made like varsity jackets. And then that was like a thing in the school. And then like from there, like it just like spread. Yeah. So talk to me about like some of those early days designing for Lease on Life Society. So that was, um... Like, my favorite designer, or one of my favorite designers is always Ralph Lauren. So, like, with that, like, what I tried to do was, um, like, with one of the first collections, Ready to Wear collections we did, like, looking back at it now, it's, like, trash, but, like, back then, it was, like, to me, I was, like, so gassed on it, you know? Um, We took, like, blazers, and we, like, put, like, crest on them, and, like, we had, like, this big, like, sweater that had, like, a L apple um, application on it, like, a leather application on it. And then we just try to like make it this prep thing and you know, it really like that my being my first collection or like I don't know, like my first go around with that, it was really a lot of trial and error. I was trying to like channel that like Ralph Lauren streetwear vibe because at the time I was dressing like really preppy, like if we go back on like Tumblr, I was like wearing like bow ties and like loafers and all that and blazers and all that type of stuff. And but, this was this was at the same time that you were in like BBC? Yeah, it was weird. I would wear, like, BBC and, like, a blazer. It was, like, a real, you know, like, when menswear was, like, a big thing, yeah. you know, like, chinos and slacks and stuff like that. But, you know, I kind of transitioned out of that and, you know, started wearing more denim and, you know, really coming into the style that I have now. At least on life, you know, RIP, but it was a good run for what it was, but, you know, lots of better things. And so what made, was it more of that, like, the Lease on Life Society coming to an end that made you start your own? Or was it more of you wanted to start your own and then so that kind of brought the end of Lease on Life? So with Lease on Life Society, it's just like, I was really young mm-hmm. and then like a lot of the stuff that I was doing, 
Well, to, to, I say it like this, like I wasn't really focused in on it. Like I was more focused on like being lit for Instagram and like you know traveling to like party and like all of that stuff. So it came to a point where I was like, damn, like I can't you know be a real designer and like live this lifestyle of partying and like trying to be like a rapper, you know. So I had to like really like change what I was doing. So it's like I just stopped with Lisa and Life Society and I was like, okay, I'm just gonna start over with Bravado and then that's what kind of that's how like you know that happens so talk to me about some of the early days of focusing on Bravado. like what was your mentality going into starting this of restarting basically well with that I really wanted to like just stop making clothes just for the fun of it and like really make pieces that people will like really look at mm -hmm. and then really be drawn to whether it's like the color or like the message behind it like one of our first pieces well actually the first collection we did was make america suck again because mm -hmm. it was um during the time that donald trump was doing make america great again we all know how that goes but um we did make america suck again with the three k's and then i think high snot picked it up and we did like a um interview on that and like that gained a lot of traction and then it was like i was like searching and then these like the right blogs you know like the right they were like, mm -hmm. oh, like, who does this kid think he is? Like, we just get him killed. I don't yeah. know, like, not, not like, to that extent, not to that extent, but, like, it was like, oh, who does he think he is? Like, blah, 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 blah. And so was, it became much more than just a clothes. It kind of yeah, became a whole political. Yeah, and that was, like, um, I had met Joey around that time, Joey Badass, mm -hmm. and then he, like, wore this shirt. And then, um, you know, he was doing All-American Badass at the time, and then it just, like, meshed it perfectly yeah, you know perfect. and then one thing led to another but you know we kept making like garments that we like i felt like were bangers like you know like people have albums like i look at my collections as albums like i don't want to put out a collection that's like this is a filler like we didn't need mm -hmm. this track like i want every piece to like hold its own and be like i need everything like this is a classic like you know certain albums you could like listen top to bottom like graduation you know nothing was the same like that's how I want like all my collections to be. So that's how we kind of like dealt into that. So do you also and I know you've talked a lot about rappers, how you see your collections as albums. At one point do you draw a lot of inspiration from music into your clothes? Like a hundred and ten, like every all the time. Like I remember the um this one show we did for at least in Life Society. It was like a Heaven and Hell T shirt. Mm -hmm. So basically I directly took the you know, in the cut, the Kid Cudi, mm -hmm. like the flames, I literally took that, like the flames from that and like inverted it and then like made artwork from that. But a lot of the times the music that I'm listening to does like reflect into the clothes. It's just like more so the whole climate of the world, you mm -hmm. know, and like what I'm trying to push in like my agenda, like so it goes through the clothing. I know when I've seen you talk before, one of the most interesting things that I think you talk a lot about is how it's when people ask you, well, do you do design for yourself or, and you kind of have a common answer of, I'm not really designing for myself, but what I want to see people wear. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely nowadays, it's pretty much the same, cause like I want to spread like the word of God through mm -hmm. my clothing. So like, that's what I wear, you know? Mm -hmm. It's like, I might not wear it all the time, but you know, that's what like I push. So at the end of the day, um, how do I say this? Yeah, like it's it's what I want to see people wear. It's like I want to change people's lives and their mindset behind how they go on like with their lives. That's what the thing with um, least on life society it was like kind of cliche and corny, but you know you can always you know renew your lease on life. Yeah. You know, but that's like how I feel about like my clothing. It has like a message and like. The way to get that message out is to get it through people. But if you can make it on fashion statements, then and it just comes to like the point where everyone's just like, what's it? So yeah. No, no, no. I'm not going to cut you off. That's all um, good. For each collection, do you think it's the same message or do you try and change that message from the collection? Um, collection? Each collection, it definitely varies. Because um, like the first collection was Make America Sun yeah. Again. That was, you know, very straight to the point. And then our first... I'll call that like the pre collection to like the first collection. And the first collection was Rebirth. So, with that Rebirth collection, was kind of me like rededicating my life to like God in a sense and rededicating my life to like designing, you know? Um, so, like a lot of that like imagery 
with that collection was based on like um Christ and the cross and you know salvation and praying for peace you know and like you know it had the um Grim Reaper jeans mm -hmm. with like the Jesus on one side like the crucifix and the Grim Reaper on the other side you know still playing like certain themes we do carry on but we try to like change up the message and then collection two was next level high which was basically it's like the stepping stone from me mm -hmm. and then we got next level high from that which is like our biggest like trademark right now and then collection three was do you think i'm crazy which really really wasn't like there was really no like message behind that it was just based off of like do you think i'm crazy because there's a period in my life where i just felt like I was really like getting into my zone and it's like with the garments and like with the embroidery and like, you know, the denim was like, all right, like this is what I need to do is like make these like really crazy. And now with collection four, it's um, Rumors of War. So it's just like talking about like the whole climate as, as, as the world at large. Yeah. So, and I think one of the common, kind of common mediums for, for your message, I mean, not only let alone close, but the actual specific pieces have been denim. And yeah, I think that's kind of what you've become known for. And I know you talked a little about how at first you were kind of dressing preppy and weren't really wearing a lot of denim. Mm. So how do you go from that to actually the denim being your... Well, I mean, definitely the denim is like, I definitely have like a lot of inspiration from the streets, you know, just like being in New York. Um, like, I used to like buy H&M denim and just like mm -hmm. destroy it and like customize it from there and like... Me and my homie Bo, like, he was also doing denim, he, like, inspired me to do it as well. We'll always, like, go back and forth with, like, denim ideas, and, you know, it's just, like, denim is just a thing that's, like, always, everyone is wearing denim. Everyone in this room right now is wearing a pair of denim, and it's, like, something sure. that's, like, never gonna go out of style. Like, yeah, sure, like, you might not wear this wash, like, every day, mm -hmm. but, like, you can still put these jeans on in, like, 10 years. And, that's like, why you still have people buying, like, old Levi Yeah, ones. of course. And it's like, a lot of my jeans that I do make, like, um, the Collection 3, like, um, signature theme denim, it's like, that's what do you think I'm crazy and distressing. That pair was molded off of a pair of, um, nudies that I had, um, destroyed and, like, worn over, like, a period of, like, three years. And I was like, damn, like, I need to get someone to, like, really, you know, replicate this and, like, push it. And that's, like, what it's come to. Does that answer the question? Yeah. Kind of, yeah, but it's like denim is like, it's an everyday thing. It's like, that's like all I wear is trying to like make my mark on the world by pushing the boundaries of denim, you know? And what about Virgil? So um, I met Virgil through Heron at, um, I think um, Tremaine was doing um, the this thing that he does every year for his mom with the mm -hmm. velvet cake. That was last summer. So I met Virgil there. And then basically, I don't know, like, we just Instagram, you know, and then this one kid took my, um, so at the Heron Preston pop up that we did, the collab, I did this off white team, and then it was like next level high on it, mm -hmm. like in the back. And then some kid on Facebook, like, took it and was like, oh, this is my collab with Virgil. Really? And I was like, I took that, I took that, and I'll put it on my story. I was like, this guy is like wearing a graduation cap because he's capping. <laughs> so, um, but just so I was like, yo, we should just like, like link up, like whatever. And then one thing led to another. And then, you know, he did. Cause it wasn't for like him doing the fake, yeah. his fake thing with my stuff. Like I would have never posted that. And then I don't think, I don't know. It's just how the universe it's works, fate, yeah. you know? Yeah. And it's funny. Cause it kind of goes back to your whole message about like, I remember in one of your first interviews when you're talking about Lease on Lease on Life, it's how it was like it wasn't you who got that house, it was God wanted you in that house. Yeah, no, nah, like definitely God put nah, you in like, a position to work with Virgil. Everything, like I thank God every day for life for the opportunities to be here, you know, because I've definitely seen him work in my life, and I wouldn't be where I'm at if I like his guidance and if I like the teachings I've like gotten instilled for me from like you know my church and everything like that. But um, everything happens for a reason, you know. Like my my purpose here is more than just clothes. Like it's really just to like encourage people, you know, to show them that you could do this. Like mm -hmm. I'm a designer, but like I didn't go to school for designing. Like I just worked very hard, you know. You could put anything you want to do. You just have to put your mind through it, you know. And it's like just keep your faith in God and just like take the up and downs. So you get to where you're going. 
So, like, what do you have planned? What, what's up next? Um, so, actually, next week I'm doing an event with me and Marcus in Las Vegas. We're doing on the Grindstone Workshop. So, we've been kind of, like, taking that on tour, like, you know, trying to expand it more than just Grindstone. But, you know, we'll see what comes of that. And then we have Collection 4 dropping in mid-September. Hopefully, we get all of our gentlemen. Because <laughs> that's the only thing that's yeah. holding us back. Because, you know, it's not easy to, like... Do all the denim. I mean, we don't like do all the now. We do certain things to them, but it's not like everything. But you know, we have a great factory that you know holds it down. It's like really intricate before we do. So that's coming, and then um, hopefully um, we should be expanding like the off white collaboration. That would be dope. I think we might do like um something for the kids with that, mm -hmm. and then you know we'll see. Like Can I really leave, yeah, I really leave it up to God, and like I just. Walk in his will and let him guide my path. And then from there, you know, I don't, I don't know. Like, I just, I never thought that I'd be doing this to, like, this scale. You know, I always mm -hmm. dreamt about it. And, like, you know, I remember in the days, the Tumblr days, the different kids in the city who were running it. And I was like, damn, like, what I would do to, like, be, like, in that position. Yeah. But, like, I wasn't ready for it then. Like, if I had it, like, if I was in the position I'm in, like, when I was, like, 20, 21, like, I would have, like, blew it. Yeah. So everything, you know, you had to trust the process. To an extent, I feel like you're a part of Black History in LA. Like, we talk about, like, design. I feel like one of the biggest fashion houses today, Off-White. Yeah. Like, the creative director of Off-White being, like, the men's artistic director of Louis Vuitton. It's like, kind of passing the torch, I feel like, in some way. No, nah, it definitely is, because, um, like, we're at this point now where it's, like, the door has opened tremendously for like black designers and people mm -hmm. try to be like let's not make this a black or a white thing but like let's keep it real like before Virgil like who else was it is Oliver and then there was um the dude at Givenchy I'm sorry like I don't remember his name but like Virgil's like the mm -hmm. third like major like the third black man yeah. to be running a fashion house and not to like he's a, a black straight man doing it so it's like it shows us like and you could do like someone who has no real professional yeah like it, the amount of boundaries that he's broken is it goes beyond just that it's, it, he, people didn't want to take him seriously for so many reasons yeah. for no traditional background in fashion or cut and sew or whatever it may be and, and it's like you honestly it just begins with a you know a thought mm -hmm. and it's like as long as you could get that thought out into real life, you've accomplished your goal. It doesn't mean, like, it doesn't matter if you've worked, if you went to, you know, FIT or Parsons or wherever, you know. It's about having an idea and actually yeah, having it's about the skills doing to execute. It. Like, I'm like, I'm not a great seamstress or a sewer, but like, I could like, I do my denim samples, mm -hmm. you know, but when it comes down to like, sitting down, making a blazer or like a jacket or like some crazy garment that in my head, that's why I bring my dad in. It's like, or I sit down with one of my manufacturers. I'm like, yo, how do we bring this to life? And it's like, you know, you just had to have the right outlets, basically. Yeah, because I, I, what I think a lot of people don't understand is that it's a skill, and it's and like it doesn't matter if you're not able to, you know, cut and sew your own piece, because it's a skill in its own being able to have an idea and creating a team that can help that idea come yeah. to life. And that's like, like that's um. One of the things that like I really aspire to, you know, to be like like Virgil, mm -hmm. where it comes down to like having a team that's like so, you know, on it. You yeah. Know? It's like when you have those people you can rely on. It's like you can like pass off some of your burdens because like right now it's like it's me, my fiance, my dad, a couple of interns, and it's like damn, I can't do this all yeah. by myself. You know, it's like. You need help. Like everyone needs help. Like Virgil needs help. I need help. Like anyone, any one designer that says like, "Oh, I make every piece. I do this all." I'm like, nah. Like Matt Simmons. Like, bro. Like we have a huge ass team, bro. Like it's not just you. And that's what people have to get over. It's not just themselves. It's about your team. It's about your community. It's about putting the next person on. You know. Mm -hmm. It's like that's why us as black designers. It's like we have opened like this gate and like this whole new like community that's like in like a couple years it's gonna be talked out talked about like wow this was like a like renaissance mm -hmm. and sort you know well this is the first time you've ever seen this 
if a designer ever does the digital drip on the garment, just know I'm coming for them. Balenciaga, anyone, I'm coming for you if I see this on your garments on the runway. But it's like really crazy because like the Matrix is, you know, such like an iconic and like cultural statement. And like, I've never seen anyone like do this before. So like, you know, we have like the digital drip hair and there's like subliminal messages in it. Like you see, there's like no 666. I don't know if you can see that. And God we trust, you know, love reigns, a whole bunch of stuff. But um, yeah, this is one of my favorite pieces. These are the little Yachty Point Twos. These are the um, these are like our most iconic denim. The do you think I'm crazy? Distressed denim. Um, these are actually for the homie J Balvin. So these are cool because you know it's just like playing off like this tie dye thing that's like going on right now. But we've been dying denim, so you know whatever. Um, but yeah, I just like these because they're cool. You can wear them like for white tee, you be straight, or you could like go crazy and like really wild out. Sold out. Then we have these. These are the Hell on Earth theme denims. These will be coming out for Collection Four. Um, in that sense, like this really like portrays the whole collection in a sense because it has the peace and safety, and then the sudden destruction. There's a Bible verse. It's like when you hear peace and safety, beware because it's about to be sudden destruction. So that's like the whole theme of it. And these are like my favorite pair of denim that like I've done for the collection. And these will be coming out shortly. And I hope you have a chance to buy them.